In the last video, we used AWS LightSail to launch a LAMP application server. And then we dug into that with our command uh, line utilities and edited some files and got a feel for what it would be like to manipulate an application server to uh, display the content that we wanted. Now, what kind of content do we want? Well, it just depends on what you want to do. The people here at OpenEMR, they use the LAMP technology, the technology stack that we talked about, to create a full-blown, open-source, free EHR product. This is something that supposedly is in use by hundreds of millions of people around the world. Now, here in America, I guess we have products like Epic and NextGen, and most of our hospitals and practitioners are being given funds to help them with electronic health records from the state and local governments, federal government, and so on. But I'm sure there must be people that aren't able to afford Epic and these other products, and they are using a solution like OpenEMR that they can launch on their own and maintain without having to pay millions of dollars every year. So this is an interesting idea because in our space, digital health, we uh, should be aware of these types of solutions and maybe be prepared to contribute to them to make them better. So I'll leave it to you to go to this website, openemr.org. There's a link here on the PowerPoint. And you can go read about that. You can see about how you can uh, contribute to the community and uh, do a demo of the software and so on. In this video in particular, we're going to launch our own instance of OpenEMR. They have a nice uh, package that they've deployed to Amazon AWS that lets us download or launch the instance with just a few clicks. So, you know, we started down the road of virtualization with VMware and then VirtualBox, then LightSail. We're going to make one more step and use the normal Amazon AWS EC2, which is short for Elastic Compute Cloud, and launch a product in that uh, user interface from the beginning. So I'm going to start that process now. You'll follow along and hopefully be able to do it on your own. So we'll go to our console, and I should already be logged in, but I'll go to my AWS Management Console and see. Okay, looks like I'm logged in. And then I'm going to go to EC2. So it's right there, but you could type it in if it wasn't right there. You can see that in my Oregon region, I have uh, one instance running. There's other regions in the United States that we could also use, but in my case, I'm just going to go ahead and use the Oregon one. Now, I know from experience that to launch an application server or any kind of virtual machine within the EC2 interface, I have to have a key pair. In LightSail, they let you create the key pair as you went along the process with just a couple clicks, so they were saving you some hassle. In our case, we're not using LightSail, so we're going to have to create that key pair right now. Fortunately, it's not that difficult. You just have to remember to do it. So here's the key pairs on the left. I'm going to go up here to do Create Key Pair. I'm going to name this OpenEMR-Oregon-2020. Oops. I'm going to leave it in the PEM format. So that creates the key pair, and then I have to download it. So this .pem file, you need to save that, just like before with your light sale key. You need to save that and not lose it. So we'll save it and do OK. If I look at my downloads, yeah, it's there, so I'm good. Now, I'm going to scroll back up, go to my EC2 dashboard, and I'm going to launch an instance. So there's already a button just to do that right here, launch instance. So what kind of instance do I want to launch? Well, there's many, many choices. There's all these different flavors of Linux, Ubuntu, Red Hat, Amazon Linux. You could launch Windows. You could do something with deep learning. The community and the marketplace provides all these instance images ready to go so that you just click on one and then you can fire it up. Uh, it's the same thing with OpenEMR. You can search for it and you'll find the OpenEMR instance that you want. So it says, um, no results for OpenEMR, and that's because it actually is spelled a little differently, probably. So we're going to look in the, but it did find it in the AWS Marketplace. Okay, so here at the top, OpenEMR Cloud Express Edition. It's actually free for you guys who are just signed up. So we're going to do Select. And then it gives us a little window here about how much it costs, depending on what type of computer we run it on. It runs anywhere from virtually nothing to you know, 10 cents an hour. There's 700 hours in a month. So that would be something like $70, $80 for a very large instance. Um, so you can just go ahead and pick the, I'm going to pick the, the small one. 
Um, but you know, you can play with it and see if you want to. All right, so here it's, you have to check off the one you want. So we can go ahead and um, pick small. I, if I were you guys, I'd do free tier, but I think the small one will perform a little bit better and I'm not worried about the money so much. And then you would do next. You can check through all these things. Generally, you can leave them alone. You don't have to really worry about it. And then you can review and launch. It's giving me a warning that I'll have to pay. That's fine. And then you can go down here and you can say, um, you're happy with the T2. And then it's asking you about security groups right here. So because we chose the um, AWS Marketplace, it comes with the settings about how it should be set up for security. So in this case, it was generated by the AWS Marketplace and is based on the recommending settings for OpenEMR Cloud as provided by the OEMR group. So that's one of the nice things is that you don't have to go in there and mess with the networking details. So um, the other thing you could do if this was a real situation is you could change how much storage you wanted to reserve. So we're only saving eight gigabytes of storage in a real large hospital scenario, maybe you would use more. Just pointing these things out to you, not so that you do it right now, but so you understand how when you launch an instance from the AWS marketplace, there's the chance to tweak some of these details based on your actual needs. Now, if we're happy with all this, we can go ahead and click launch. And then it's going to ask us for our key pair. So we're going to choose an existing key pair. And we're going to choose this open, e open EMR organ 2020 key pair that I created in the previous example. And then it says that you have, you acknowledge that you have access to the key pair and that you won't be able to access the instance without this key pair. So that's just AWS trying to avoid a problem so that you don't launch an instance spend money, maybe fill it up with data, and then realize, oh no, I don't have the key pair. So that's fair warning to all you guys. If you are gonna do this, you gotta be able to keep track of your files. And then now that you've got the key pair selected, you can do launch instances. Okay, so it created the security groups, it created the rules for getting through the AWS firewall, and now it's launching. Okay, so now what you do is you can go look at it inside your EC2 uh, console. All right, so now I have a running instance, which is pre-existing to this. And you can see that this instance here is pending. So this is another one of those situations where it can take you know, a few to several minutes to start up. So we can sit here for a minute and, and wait on it to start up. Now here it says it's running. Now I know from experience that even though it says it's running, the software is not gonna work yet because we're in that um, zone where the Machine is on and it's starting itself up, but it's not really functioning as we need it to function. So I'm gonna wait here for a few minutes, I'll pause the video, and then we'll come back when it actually is running and ready to go. Okay, it's okay, and we're back from waiting for the instance to fully load. If you look here, you're able to see that the instance has a public IP address and a public IPv4 DNS name. So that's a very long and cryptic uh, name, but you can cut and paste it into your web browser and it will um, launch up right up. So I'll go ahead and do that. Now, it's prompting us for a username and password. So if you were to go and review the documentation for OpenEMR, you would be able to find that it says the password is the same as the instance ID and you use the username admin. Okay, so go right here, back to our EC2 page. This is the instance ID that they're talking about. So that's not gonna be very easy to cut, to type in directly, so I'll we'll have to cut and paste it. Let's just do that. And then we'll go in here. Admin, and we want English, and we wanna do login. So maybe we'll save that so we can keep typing it over again. So at this point, you're inside the open EMR software. Looks like you're at kind of the receptionist view. You're able to go in here and you know mess around with a the calendar. There really isn't any data in the system right now. So you won't have any patients or providers, insurance information, things like that. But you will be able to bounce around and see what the, the uh, user interface is like. So for example, we can go in here, the patient finder, add a new patient, 
you know, name, date of birth, social security number, all that type of thing. Now, I'm not going to continue surfing around inside an empty open EMR uh, product because that's kind of uh, pointless. But I will direct you to the open EMR webpage where they have a nice um, demo site set up for this purpose. So they have one that's fully loaded with data uh, from the administrator, physician, accountant view. You can log in with sample patients like Phil and Susan right here. That'll give you a chance to uh, poke around inside this EHR product and see what you think. Now at this point, I've myself not even poked around that much, but I think we'll have a chance to do that as a group and maybe we'll have some thoughts about how the product can be improved and you know, have a chance to experience the product as a, a practitioner or as a patient. So I'm going to stop right here uh, as far as introducing new material, because I want to spend more time on this inside the live class session. But I think it's interesting to just reflect on our progress over the past few hours. Starting from basically no knowledge of TCP IP networking or servers, we introduced virtualization on our Mac through VMware, launched an AWS account, went in there, um, kind of progressed through a series of relatively short videos, you know, 15, 20 minutes at a time, and now, just a couple hours later, here you are launching a full-blown uh, EHR product inside your AWS cloud. Now, we all know that it'd probably be hard to do this without referring to the video and documentation, but I think it's still pretty interesting that you know, a motivated person can get this far so quickly. And maybe that really is the magic of the cloud, is that a lot of the things that people had to deal with for so many years that required a very uh, specialized engineer, now uh, an amateur, a motivated amateur, but an amateur nonetheless can do all these types of things and make pretty good progress without really having to have too much specialized training. We'll stop there, talk about it some more later.